Back with our guest tonight, Jacola Lane. Jacola Lane is with us tonight. Uh, Restore Your Vote Tennessee is the group as we talk about restoring voting rights for felons. 737 plus is the phone number if you'd like to call in. We've had a number of good calls so far. We appreciate that. Uh, let me uh, take the devil's advocate position here. I've got uh, something I pulled up. Some pundits and legal scholars argue that felons should not be eligible to vote at all because they say when people commit a crime at that level, they violate the social contract, okay? Which is the agreement among citizens to abide by rules and laws for the good of society. This reasoning says that those who break it, they say by committing a crime, are no longer entitled to the benefits of the contract, such as political representation. How do you reply to those critics? Well, we just don't agree. Yeah. Um, our position is that we strengthen our democracy the more people are involved. People who have been convicted of felonies, um, we believe that they sh pay taxes, that they should have um, a vote in who directly represents them. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times, people may not be aware, but when they say this level or that level, there are felonies that are nonviolent and felonies that are valid. Right. And so it just, Every situation is unique, and I think that when someone has, what we believe is when someone has served their time, whether it's probation, parole, or incarceration, they should have the right to vote, and people who have never lost the right to vote should should also be able to use mm -hmm. their, use and exercise their right to vote. Right, we'll keep uh, getting these calls here in. I believe this is Bobby up next. Hey, Bobby. Yes. Welcome in. What's on your mind? Yes. How you doing, Chris? Yeah, I got a, a in trouble back in 1989, mm -hmm. and I went and served my time, got everything over with. And I, I live in Portland, Tennessee. Would that make any difference? No, go ahead. Okay. We're still in Tennessee. And a friend of mine got me to vote back yep. about five, or six years ago, and I voted and everything. And then they sent me a letter in the mail and took my voters' rights back after I voted. And I was just wondering why, you know, it's been such a long, it's been 30 years since I've been yeah. old with, and they still keep turning me down and everything. Well, you have to actually go through the process of getting your rights restored. And so if you did not go through that process, that means that you don't have your rights restored yet. So I would just look into, um, again, you can go to restoreyourvote.org. Um, depending on what the conviction was, we can help you move forward with identifying who can help you complete that certificate of restoration and see if you, know, you have any court costs or any things like that that may be hindering you. But first, you do have to get that right um, those rights restored before you can go move forward with getting your registration and actually being a participant in voting here in Tennessee. Does that make sense to you, Bobby? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this uh, this group actually, this is good that we're getting the word out because this group, Restore Your Vote, uh, may be able to help you. You can go to their website and, and look into it and kind of go go through the, the steps needed and get that card and then you'll be good to go. Yeah, and each county ha each, each county also has an election commission right. that you can also go through and they know of course this whole process as well right. and if you bump into anything we can definitely help help you with good. that. Good. And in his case, I think he said Portland so that would be Robertson County, I believe, if I've got my geography correct. correct. So check it out, Bobby. Thank you so much. All right, we'll continue on here uh, and this is Megan. Hi Megan, welcome. Hi, yes, I want to say that I do support what the work of um, Restore Your Vote, mm -hmm. and I definitely think that, um, you know, one example that I can think of is there's a lot of countries where um, a, dic a dictator may decide to throw people in prison just because they disagree with that dictator. Right. And of course, in the United States, we enjoy a democracy, but um, the example that I can think of is Nazi Germany, um, you know, where Hitler came to power and suddenly rights were being taken away and um, people were sent to concentration camps and those were innocent people. So there have been societies where innocent people have been rounded up and thrown in prison simply for disagreeing with the dictator. So I think what an important check and balance against having that kind of thing happen here is that having felons have the right to vote and that way if you know 
for any reason there was a dictatorship coming to power right. and i know people may say well a dictatorship could never happen here it happened in nazi germany right. so it, it does happen and it can happen so if a dictatorship were to come into power i think that would be a nice check and balance to say hey people right. who have been to prison still have the right to vote let me ask um, you this uh, megan uh, uh -huh. the argument that i brought up earlier that some people uh, say uh, if you're not willing to follow the law then mm -hmm. you should not have a role in making the law for everyone else. What do you think of that? Well, my response to that would be that that concept only works if all the just all the laws are just. But what if mm -hmm. a law comes to into effect that's not a just law? Yep. For example, uh, getting back to the Nazi Germany, if if there's a law that says you know Jewish people can't do X Y Z, that's right. not a just law. Right. Another example would be um, in the United States when slavery was legal. Um, that was a very unjust law. Slaves could not vote, so there was no no way for them to overturn that law. So many slaves were killed. So many people were fight, killed fighting in the, in the Civil War. If slaves had had the right to vote, maybe we could have eliminated slavery without all of that violence. Same thing, what if there's an injustice being done to, to people in prison? Who better to correct that injustice than someone who's been in the prison system? Good point. All the progress that we're trying to make with the prison system, trying to re rehabilitate people, trying to make the prison system more effective, who better to have a voice on those changes than someone been, uh, that's been in the prison system? And then I'd like to bring up a third example. Sure. Um, right now, it's controversial whether, let's say, for example, uh, marijuana should be used for pain use, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I personally don't think marijuana is good. But I, let's think of an example. What if you had a, ca a cancer patient who bought marijuana for the pain and wound up, you know, um, obviously right now it's not a felony right. to use marijuana, but let's just say in theory if it were. Had a person that used marijuana for pain went to prison if it were a fel felony, which it's not, but just a hypothetical. Then when it comes time to debate, okay, should we use marijuana for cancer pain or any kind of pain, right. someone who really has a personal experience with that would be silenced. So, um, you know, me personally, I usually vote Republican. Um, and I, I think some, some of the people that are felons that get their right to vote, they may vote, they may vote Democrat. That's okay, it's a free country. I want people to have the right to vote. I want people to vote rep Republican because I've convinced them that it's the right thing to do, not because I've silenced someone that disagrees with me. So uh, to me, I agree uh, with the restore your vote. When you take away the right to vote, you are silencing a portion of our society. You are silencing the felons. They've done their time. They pay taxes. Yep. They need to have a voice in our society. Megan, thank you. Great points, and I'm so glad you called in. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you both. Bye-bye. Good night. What do you think of that? I think she made some great analogies and some yeah. good examples, for sure. And there are people who have served time who are innocent. And, yeah. and that has been proven that's not the case well, all I, the time. But And what I would say is nice to hear in these partisan times that we're in, to hear someone who, who says, you know what, I like to vote one way, but that doesn't mean that I would ever want to suppress anyone to vote. You know, this is the whole idea of our country is Absolutely. I want you to vote the way you want to vote. Mm -hmm. I Absolutely. want you to have that right to vote. So 737 plus, everybody's the phone numbers. We continue on. And uh, one of our good friends is on line one holding. Reverend, are you there? Hey, good evening. Is this the Reverend Enoch Fuzz? Thank you. I didn't want to call in, but this was, I saw so many people calling in your show tonight, you know, and I watch it all the time. Thank you. I said, wow, why, if all of these people, like they're calling tonight, if they would vote, yeah. then felons would have a right to vote. Right. And, and that's my point that I'm trying to make tonight, except to compliment Megan on being so smart and giving a good interview to you, except she votes Republican. <laughs> but <laughs> so that's, that's good. But here's my point. Okay. You, Tennessee, and you hear it all over, the lowest voter turnout in the nation, or one of the lowest, but whatever it is, just the fact that people don't vote. We're looking at 20% yeah. in the black community turnout over the past 20 years. 
um, if people would vote, then felons would have the right to vote because you would have legislators who didn't take away those rights. The reason felons don't have the right to vote, you can't prove it, but this is really the fact. Someone decided, here's a way to get rid of some of the votes that would vote against me. Um, and so when those people were in power, they passed laws that prohibited folk who wouldn't vote in their favor. But that's because people don't vote. And I'm mm. seeing all the information and help for getting felons to vote who don't vote. Low, very, very low turnout of people who are felons and uneducated who vote. I'm just being, you know, you can mm -hmm. help me be wrong on that. I'll be happy. But the point I'm trying to make, why don't we put this effort into getting people out to vote? Why don't we get a 50 or 75 percent voter turnout of people? Then we won't have these very things that we're talking about tonight. Just my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think Jacola would agree with that. I mean, we'd all love to see voter participation across the board increase in our state. And there, there, is, there are tons of groups who's working on it. And yeah. of course, there was some backlash at the state level because of that this year. And uh, Campaign Legal Center has been involved with trying to push back against that because uh, they are, you know, criminalizing people who have been out getting out the vote, getting people registered. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that is coming forth. Um, and, and so I think you can do both at the same time. Uh, I will inject a little personal opinion here oh. that uh, I'm pretty sure since I became legal voting age, I've voted in just about every election possible. Um, and, you know, I've had people who tell me, oh, I'm not going to vote because my vote doesn't count. Or they, they feel like it just doesn't matter. It's a rigged system. Well, you can believe whatever you believe, but you still have the right. And I think it's a privilege. And I've gone and st stood in some pretty long lines when I could be somewhere else on election day or early voting or whatever, but there's just something about stepping into that voting booth and making choices uh, as a citizen where I feel every time that I, once I cast my vote and I walk out, I feel like that was worth whatever weight or whatever inconvenience to my day. Um, and I just wish more people would, and you get your little sticker, your I voted sticker, mm -hmm. and you wear it proudly. And I just, I want people to think about that uh, with, with the election coming up, the mayor's election, um, and other elections throughout. You know, we've got a presidential election next year. Um, get out, register, and do your duty. And think about all the people who've sacrificed to, so that we, we can have our right to vote. All right, off of my soapbox. Uh, before we go, we've got another caller on line three, and I believe it's Sean. Sean, how are you? Sean, you there? Well, wait a second. Maybe they're watching on TV. And how are you? Oh, there you are, Sean. All right, we're patient. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, my, my question is that I did a lot of them watching on TV. Yeah, turn your TV set down because there's a delay, okay? Just talk oh, on the I'm phone. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. That's okay, that's okay. It happens all the time. All I, right, I, go I, ahead. Okay, I did a lot of running around last year. Uh, I wanted to vote, and I'm a felon, and I just got off probation. Okay. And uh been about four years now. I've been off, and I, I went to vote at the re voter's registration place. Mm -hmm. And they told me I had to go down to the probation office. And I went down there, and then they told me I had to go here. And then they told me I had to go back to my hometown and the judge, see the judge, and yep. get released. And I just a lot of running around, wearing and tear and gas. And, yeah. and I just can't afford to do that just to vote. I don't, and I would love to vote and, and, and make my vote important, you know. Well, this is exactly why we're uh, talking about this, because this process uh, is, is not easy, and this group, Restore Your Vote, is here to help you. Uh, do you live here in Nashville? Yeah, yes, I do. Okay, and go it's, ahead. It sounds like you were convicted in another county here in Tennessee. Well, I was, I was, a, I was a federal inmate. Then I had to go to the state. Then they tell me I had to go to the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they give me a card and go say this lady and then I had to go say probation officer and yeah. just, I just keep going down the line like oh my god what does it take why can't I just walk in the boat for a place you know yeah. in this boat 
you know. Yep, I've it done is. my time. Very difficult. You know, paid my debt to society, and I just don't understand. The, well, listen into what down. listen into what Jacola has to say because I think her oh, group I'm sorry. might be. I'm sorry. No, go. That's no, fine. That's fine. Okay. fine. We're okay. so glad you called, Sean. The the federal process is a little different than the state of Tennessee's process, but we can definitely assist you. It is complicated. We know that the process can be improved, and in the meantime, we're just doing everything we can with this project to help get people through the process. But please reach out to me. Um, you can go to our website, or you can call mm -hmm. or text me. Um, my information is. Jacola at RestoreYourVote.org. Do you have access to a computer? Uh, just my phone. Okay, you, okay. Can, do yeah, you can do it on your phone. Yeah, you can do it on your phone. Please email me, and I can just send you um, all the information and, and get you in contact with some folks who can help you since you have a federal charge. It is a little different than yeah. if you were just convicted in a county in Tennessee. Yeah, they want me to go back to my hometown, go yeah. in front of a judge and all this, and, you know, I, I just... It's it's, too, it gets too it, much, yeah. 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 Uh, so just Google or on your phone I don't search. I live in that county no more. My life is in Nashville. I mean, it's yeah. not. It's Restore not your vote. Way. It's called Restore <laughs> Your Vote Tennessee, Sean. So look that up okay, and, I and sure reach out. Okay, I appreciate y'all, and y'all did a great job. And thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Good luck. Bye, Good luck. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> That's a perfect example right perfect there. Perfect example is it can be extremely complicated. And what we want to do is really streamline this process. Yeah. And it shouldn't be where people are get, given the runaround. And so we do want to change it. And I'm glad that he called and spoke up about what his personal experience and journey has been. And so we want where to. He actually is trying, it. but at some point he just he's just given up because it's just and too, that too much. And a lot, unfortunately. We'll take another break and we'll come back. Got a couple more calls on hold. We appreciate your patience. Stay with us. We'll be back.